In this episode, we speak with Ross Dever, a partner at Toma Bravo, which is one of the largest software investors in the world, with approximately $138 billion in assets under management. Ross co-heads Toma Bravo's growth equity platform, a dedicated fund focused on making minority investments in high-growth software and technology companies. He leads the team's close collaboration with founders and management teams to implement world-class operating principles and help realize their visions and growth potential. Ross was recognized by GrowthCap as one of the top 40 under 40 growth investors of 2023. I'm your host, RJ Lumba. We hope you enjoy the show. If you liked the episode, click to follow. RJ Lumba is the managing partner of GrowthCap and the executive chairman of Market Insight Media. He is the host of Growth Investor, a podcast featuring today's best investors, executives, and founders. In the minutes ahead, we'll uncover insights and strategies for accelerating growth and succeeding in business. Ross, great to chat with you today. Thanks for joining. Thanks, RJ. Appreciate you having me here on the podcast. Of course. I, th- I feel like you're a podcast veteran. I was checking out your background. I think you you did one recently. So very excited to have this conversation. I thought we'd kick off in kind of an interesting area in that you know the growth space well, you know software well. You were with Toma early in your career, then you went to Insight and back to Toma. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of maybe like the differences and maybe why you decided to move back to Toma? Sure. Yeah, so you know, I've spent my whole career focused on investing pretty much exclusively in enterprise software companies, and fortunate to have worked at two great places, Tom Bravo and Insight, and really, you know, right place, right time, and a lot of good fortune in seeing the evolution of, in large part, the SaaS world, and now the SaaS world turning into, you know, SaaS plus AI or an AI driven, you know, software landscape. So it's. Um, really been, you know, a blessing just for me personally to have worked in an exciting area, a fast paced area, and, you know, an area that's had a lot of growth and allowed me to drive a lot of personal growth. And um, I'll say rejoining Toma Bravo for me had a lot to do with, as I looked at the next chapter, the next year, years in growth investing for where we had come from, you know, is a large part of that and a large part of my career in a low interest rate environment, obviously stimulated by the pandemic and the response to that at the very end here. It really occurred to me that Toma Bravo has evolved their firm from when I first worked here and the principles around being very operationally minded and operationally helpful for growing software companies just seem to resonate so much with what might be around the corner after this explosion of software company development and investment in software companies to grow, it really seemed like a great fit in how the growth world might look to, you know, mature and continue to evolve and how the principles and and resources of Toma Bravo just could be a really great fit. So that from just a thematic standpoint was just super interesting to me. And, you know, uh, on top of that, there's just really great people here at Toma Bravo and folks that have obviously have known since the beginning of my career. And so, it was just an exceptional opportunity to kind of get the band back together with some folks that I worked with a long time ago, you know, 15 plus years ago, but doing it with a platform that I think really has a unique potential to impact growth stage companies going forward. Yeah, I was, I was scrolling through your team page and it seems like it never ended. I was scrolling and scrolling. And so it's a fairly big organization, it seems. And, and by the way, congrats on all the pictures. I mean, the, those pictures are fantastic. I think you have the best profile pictures of any oh, firm out there. Uh, right, so look- kudos to the photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, reflecting back, it's, you know, you've been in the software investing space for a long time. How much more competitive is it today than it was when you started out? Oh, it's night and day. I remember as an associate at Toma Bravo back in the day, you know, cold calling companies, and they had literally never had an investment firm call them or email them or even try to touch base with them before. And it was really explaining what the concept of a private equity firm or a growth investment firm was to founders. Now it's just become so much more institutionalized from even the inception of a new company, of how it's created, who, you know, incubates it and the ecosystem around it. And at almost at every level of a company's life cycle, there are folks that specialize at that stage. And, you know, I think that's a great thing overall, just given, you know, how we want more innovative companies out there. But from an ability to 
transact. It's unbelievably competitive out there and it should be. And a big part of uh, you know what I think about in working at a place like Tomo Bravo is that I'm actually really fortunate. It's not just me. <laughs> I've been very fortunate to partner with a lot of great you know CEOs and companies, but I don't think about it as it's Ross investing in a company. It's you know, I'm quarterbacking, bringing the capacity and, and resources of the entire Tomo Bravo platform to bear behind me, which is a great place to approach companies from on why they should work with us and how we might help them build their company. Mm -hmm. What would you tell that, you know, founder or CEO, if they're considering like three or four different well-known, highly reputable software investment firms, what would you say differentiates Toma Bravo? Yeah, it's a great question. There's really few platforms out there and firms that have as much history and investment experience and operational experience, just given the way we look to involve and support our companies with operational resources that are captive here to Toma Bravo. So we have just a very long track record of bringing a consistent focus and a consistent value prop to companies. And, you know, I think Orlando has a great quote in thinking, well, we turn great innovators into great businesses. And I love that because we not only have worked with, you know, great products out there, great CEOs and founders and development teams out there, but We've actually helped them build the operational capacity and business structures to get those products and to propagate the ideas of these founders to massive scale. And that's what every company wants to do. They want to go from a small idea to a really big idea and change a lot of people's lives and grow really, really well. And that is something that is unbelievably complicated as you start facing large scale growth challenges. And the amount of data points and scar tissue and connective learnings that we can provide from our portfolio and operating resources, we continue to think is a differentiator for us and something we continue to invest in and we think provides an entrepreneur a, a great foundation, again, to be a thought partner and an operationally minded thought partner to how their business can grow. Is there a good kind of case example if, say, if we have CEOs listening in and they're like, oh, how can a capital provider help me say I'm already scaling pretty quickly on my own, been bootstrapped, doing a significant scale. What would you tell that founder? You know, you're just going to have to climb the ladder, so to speak, or keep going to the next rung of difficulties and doing it with the marginal customer who might not be as good a fit as the exact one you first you landed. And you keep doing it with more and more employees and resources that you have to coordinate and lead and inspire. And you've got to take that into further and further distances from, you know, that great collaborative home base that you launch from. So, you know, you start layering all these permutations of complexity into, I think people really need this great product. And you start to learn about the challenges of, you know, running businesses at scale. And so unfortunately, it's not just one thing where I say, believe me, we're only going to help you in hiring and there's nobody in the world who can help you hire a CRO like we can. Okay. That's one of the things that is critical, obviously, hiring and how we can help you think about the approach to hiring, the network we can bring, the confidence that your business will have from market viability when it come up probably behind you to attract talent, all great dynamics around that one piece. But there's so much more to that. There is functional, operational expertise across development, product, sales, services, and coordinating functional silos to support growth at scale is no easy feat. Not to mention translating all that to financial sophistication, how you tell people about the health of your business. And eventually you need to convince people on a daily basis and quarterly basis of the health and, and strength of your business. But long before that, You've got to make a bunch of operationally minded decisions around investment and where and how to add resources and to measure your business and attract capital over time. That's translating the operational pieces to the financial pieces and coordinating these two is incredibly important over the life cycle of business. We have experience across all of that to bring to bear and not to mention the experience of the scale that each one of those experiences comes with, the data points it comes with at 50, 100, 200, 500, a billion dollars of revenue, 
all of these complexities of where and how you help businesses expand. And you know, lastly, I would just say the whole reason to find a partner is to help you think bigger <laughs> and help you achieve more. And so the capital to support increased investment, bigger ideas, and even things like add on acquisitions, right, which maybe come in a bit later in the purview of, of a company, are all things that, again, you want to find the right partners like-minded enough to help you attack them on a pragmatic and operationally rigorous and, and best-in-class way to get to dramatically bigger outcomes in shorter amounts of time. So it's a long-winded answer because, again, that's the business we're in is being you know a fully functional bot partner <laughs> across the operational and financial side and bringing capital and you know resources to bear behind what founders want to do. Yeah, it sounds like you get very involved with your portfolio companies. And I'm curious, like how that interaction actually takes place. Is it, do you have like a team on your end that almost integrates into the portfolio company? How frequent is that dialogue and interaction? It's a great question. And it actually takes, you know, different shapes for different investments that we make. So our buyout funds and the companies that they invest in, there is an approach to the partnership and a way that when you own a company, you can be involved in as many facets as you want to be. The approach we've taken is supporting management and supporting, for the most part, existing management on where and how they have want to operationally improve their business. So we found a great way to want to help in what could be potentially every facet of the business that what we're here to do is not say, I'm, I'm looking to be only better over here and not over here and shoulder that responsibility on, we want it all to be better. And we think we can help and support management's view on how to get that done. That spirit has carried over to our growth fund, which is the fund that does you know minority investing. And there you have a lot more different ways that we get involved with companies. And it's a lot more hand raising from exec teams and CEOs on what do you know about this one piece? Or could you provide some other context what we're hearing from our other investors or our other you know, set of experiences over here? And it might take you know, a much more narrow view of where and how we get involved. And that's fine for us. I would say a bad fit is for us is you know, writing a check and never hearing from us or us never hearing from a team. That will never be us. <laughs> but we like to say we kind of are at ready. <laughs> to be helpful and love the challenge, I think, that teams and CEOs give us on, again, I've got this idea on what we might be able to do better. What do you know about it? And who's done it before? And that's where the experience and the large portfolio we have really comes to bear to find a way to make an impact. You know, it's hard to miss one of Orlando's uh, interviews on business TV, CNBC or, or other channels and uh, i feel like his personality and energy comes through and it's a very positive vibe highly energetic i can only imagine what it's like in person when you're interacting with him but does that kind of carry through and permeate through the firm culture yeah there's no difference between the passion you see on cnbc or whatever video you're watching and uh in orlando in person just a extremely passionate extremely smart extremely engaging leader and someone that I think really cares about the culture of the firm. And yeah, that's something we take really seriously at Tomo Bravo. And, you know, I just can't say enough about working closely with him and learning from him and us learning together again about how to continuously evolve our firm to be better at helping companies grow. And looking at your background, you seem like a natural in finance and private equity, you know, straight out of undergrad, you got to Morgan Stanley, you do investment banking, then you go right into Toma Bravo, then Insight, then Toma. Did you always think, you know, you go to Northwestern, did you think like, okay, this is going to be my path and I'm going to go straight for it? I was pretty set on investing. I got the bug early. I bought Amazon back in the day, you know, once and then it crashed and then, you know, again, and it, you know, quintupled. And that was, you know, just a fascinating experience on why something would appreciate and value so dramatically that there's companies that are having their value voted on every day and provide an ability to drive value creation out of almost thin air, right? Well, it turns out it's not thin air. 
It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears behind operating a business. Connecting the financial side of it and the bug to catching a great investment and being part of a great value creation story, that was the first part. But learning how to connect the dots into all of the operational know-how, which I'm still learning to this day, quite frankly, given I've come at this from the finance side, but I've always worked at a place that has tried to be much more than a financial-minded investor. That part's been a really great development curve for me over my career. And there's real formative experiences sitting in you know, your first board meeting as an associate at a place like Tomo Bravo back in the day and learning from great operating partners and operating advisors, you know, because it's been a consistent approach here for such a long time on how to run a software business. And I think that is, again, as I think about as a quarterback to deliver operational expertise, which doesn't necessarily only come from me, but from the firm that I'm part of, married with great financial acumen to think about how you maximize equity value creation, which again, does rely on translating and, and you get that equity value creation from other people giving it to you, right? No matter what you do, you've got to have it given to you by other people consistently over time and then in the public market. So that's a combination of experiences that continues to be really interesting for me and has been you know very rewarding so far. Before we head into the last two questions, what areas of software and technology are you most interested in? At this moment in time, this week, this month, it's hard to not say from a technical standpoint, the impact that AI is having across the technology landscape, but, but especially in the and on the software landscape. So we're talking day in and day out, you know, week in and week out here about how our software companies all become AI companies. And we actually don't think about them as you know, ideas that are opposed to each other. I think that great AI companies will be connected to software workflows and software workflows will be enhanced by great AI, you know, learnings and sophisticated, more sophisticated decision making. So marrying those two is really the mission that we've all rallied around. And I find really fascinating right now to think about how things like old systems of record are now morphing into systems of intelligence as augmented by AI. And, you know, I think the potential to invest across infrastructure layer, you know, application layer, there's just tremendous opportunities for us. And I'm glad that we view it really as an extension of investing in software and tech into this world that I think will be led by AI in the future and that we're all really excited about. But I think beyond the technical of, hey, where are you most excited about right now? I continue to be really excited again about the mission to help growth stage software companies mature and help build really strong businesses out there coming off of such a hard correction for tech. We want to be on the front lines of helping, you know, really set the next stage for growth stage decision making and growth stage investing and growth stage company building. And that really as much pain as is out there coming after such a you know hard correction from evaluation and from you know the transition away from growth at all costs. That transition and knowing where we can fit health companies has me really excited about the ability to make impact in growth stage investing going forward. Excellent. Last two questions. One is can you tell us about a person who has had a profound influence on you? I was trying to think about this a little bit before and thinking about teachers, you know, authors, so many different areas of influence over the years. But for me, I can't say anybody else but my father. And in large part, it's parents. If you want to pick one person, well, it's my parents together. But mm -hmm. my dad was actually an executive in the high tech world, um, blended software and hardware actually in storage back in the day, but set me on the path to, I think, you know, tie that that interest that came, you know, deep down early on investing into technology as well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I remember green screens into DOS and to Windows and watching the technology landscape evolve over time from a very early age really set the stage for where I spend all my time today. And not only that, but then you get all your personal curiosity, you get your, you know, your values, your work ethic. It's hard to not just bring it home to the folks that raised you. So that's got to be my final answer as much as other help and influence I've had along the way. Last question. Can you tell us about a charity cause or other endeavor that you're passionate about? Yeah, well, 
Tomo Bravo is new or newer in the greater Miami area. And so for us and for me to be part of launching our firm and our presence in this area, that's been really important to us is, is trying to, you know, make inroads in the community and finding charity support in the community. And so two that we're really passionate and, and involved in a big way are the Boys and Girls Club of Miami-Dade. And, you know, another one is Feeding South Florida, you know, just see tons of opportunity to invest in this community. And I think there's so much more beyond those causes that we are thinking about. It's a really exciting and dynamic area and ecosystem to be, to be a part of on, on so many levels here. But just myself being involved with the other folks from Tumble Bravo rallying around those two causes, which are not the only two causes, but some of our larger ones has really been a great experience and allowed us to get a little closer to the community down here. Fantastic. Well, Ross, I want to thank you again for taking the time to chat with us today. This has been a wonderful conversation. Great. Thanks so much, RJ. Really appreciate it. 